now welcome back to the career build series so i'm currently building a winch for the seagull and so this is going to allow me to load in some new pallets i've built so I'll go ahead and finish up the winch and then i can show the pallets i've tried a bunch of different things that i could load and unload this is going to give me some versatility with the seagull so that we're going to go ahead and put some palletized containers in here to do a bunch of work so let's uh, continue working here so i had this for decoration this is a linear track base uh, for the large linear track and I don't like how bulky this is, but it's going to be the best option. So I put this in here, and this is going to help me load things in. And so I just need to start plumbing up the panel. So I'll uh, bring you guys in when you can start to do that. So I still haven't decided what color I want these panel faces to be. Probably this, actually. Let's go like that. There we go. Be the same as the uh, cockpit dash. All right, so we need to control this. So I need winch, I need up and in, and brakes on... I don't uh, no. I need four. So I need winch in out and I need uh, linear track forward back. So pretty simple to do that. So we want I'm trying to think of the best way to do this here. So let's do uh, winch in. So it'll be an arrow button to the left. There we go. Um, I want this winches. I'll tend to do toggles that lets me walk away from it all right and so i'll make that one so two is going to be winch out that's going to be a, an arrow button to the right that's going to also be a toggle that's going to be two then we're going to have track in And track out. All right, that's going to be arrow buttons again. So left. These are going to be pushes instead. And this will be track out, arrow button to the right. That will be a push for. Okay, good. So that's going to operate those. Just need to make a quick micro. Camera is flicking like crazy today. All right, so let's make a micro on the roof. So I've been kind of hemming and hawing on how I wanted to do this loading system. I tried a forklift, not really working all that well. It's not going to work for all the operations that I kind of need. So I need one, two, three, four, five slots on this. So let's see. But I think we'll just do a five long like that. And we'll do, it's just easier to hide. So that's going to be panel. So I tried doing some stuff with like a module that rides in the tracks, but the issue is because it's not actually connected, I have to do a ton of microcontrollers on there, and it just that would bulk it up and actually be bigger than this is. So that's on off output. So what's that? So four total. And then I think that was like that. Okay, so this is gonna be winch in. Winch out. Track in. And track out. All right. All right, so let's go in there and get this all set up. All right. So pretty simple. Simple is safe, it just works, so we'll do this. And I'll kind of show you what I've been working on once we get that. You know, trying to figure a way that I can transport some uh, fuel that if I want to, and some palletized cargo. You know, we don't have enough cargo missions. It would be really nice if they come up with a standard pallet and do some cargo missions, but they have not. All right, winch in, winch out, uh, track in, track out. Okay, that uh, that's good. All right, so let's go ahead and start hooking this up. So winch in is up, winch out, is, track out is, track out is down. Nope, uh, track up is up, I think. Track down is gonna be track in, and then I have winch out is there. Okay, so I think that's good. Composite for the panel here. This panel will connect to that panel. And then this winch will connect to this linear track. And then I want this on the hot bus so that I don't have to, that I don't have to have the system powered up. 
so that's good. All right, so let's do it, give it a quick run, a test. All right. I am in my career build series world, so... Potentially lose a little bit of fuel. Make sure the door opens up. It does. I can't get by if this is there, but I can go oh, close the door and go by, so that's fine. And then... Winch out. Winch in's not going to work, but track out. So this is a push. As you can see, that slides out. I'm going to probably slow it down. But it will go to the end of the door. And so the reason for that is because we, we can't use... We don't have any pulleys. And so... If the ramp is down, in order to get whatever's on the ground to actually come up, I need this here. If it's back here, you could put a pulley here and still work, but we don't have pulleys. So I need to send this to the end, and then that also can be used to drag stuff in like so. All right. And so we use the winch for that. All right, good. So that seems to be... Let's test the winch out, and then I think we're good. I'll hide the microcontroller. And we can actually go do this mission. So let's go plug that in. Should be able to test this out really quickly. Alright, winch in. Alright, winch out. Perfect. Alright, beautiful. Alright, let's hide this micro control here. And let's see where... Let's actually find the place in the wing I want it first. And so right here is good. As you can see, it's... Uh, wow. Camera is being super fast. Perfect spot right there. Beautiful. All right, so this is going to go there. And so I've been trying to figure a way to load things. It helps me load up some vehicles a little bit easier as well. I can actually just hook them and, and drag them in. All right, good. That goes there. That will increase the fuel a little bit too on that wing. Notice this paint. Any other paint that's off? I don't think so. Okay, so let me show you what I've been working on. So let's go ahead and save this. So we'll save that seagull winch. I already started that. So I, I made some stuff here. I made some pallets. And these pallets, I made one for diesel and for jet fuel. They're colored correctly. They're both nine blocks long. The cargo area is 18 blocks. And so this allows me to put two of these in there. They These hold about 4,000 pounds of jet fuel. And so what we can do is we can actually transpo a little fuel up to the military base, which we bought, and sell it with the Seagull. And so I need to work on this a little bit. So I tried doing some forklifts. As you can see, I built some trailers. So this will actually be how we probably move the fuel to sell it is with some of these trailers. But... Uh, Let's go ahead and grab this. This needs to be amended a little bit. So right here I put handle. So I can actually manipulate this with my character. But, uh, you know, it, it weighs about 360 pounds, I, you know, is what it would be. So you definitely wouldn't be moving it with your character. And I can't really get it to raise anyway. So let's do that. So let's save this as Jet A palette. We're going to test it. And then we will do a color swap on this. And I will save this one as diesel, so they're color-coded. These are very simple. They don't have any real internal workings. They do have a, they do have a brake on them right here. And this, uh, this doesn't require electricity, and this will break these so that they don't slide around. But now with the ropes, I can also tie them off. All right, so let's go ahead and let's launch the seagull. All right, and then I'm just going to, these don't have to go very far, so what I will do is I will just load them in. And so we're going to take two of these Jet A pallets, and what we want to do is we want to go fill up with Jet A and sell it. Uh, so we're going to go down to FJ, and then we'll go up to military base. All right, I want to make, we need to make a little money, so why did I put these so close? I don't know. But what we'll do is we'll just go like this, and I'll move them out a little bit. Okay, so let's test this. This is the first run for me, so we'll see if this works. All right, so they're, they're sitting there. That is what our contingent of fuel is going to be for our uh, load. So they look like pallets, and so I'm going to try to do a bunch of different types of pallets. And so I think that will be kind of a cool thing to do, so... I can't grab the rope while well, this fire extinguisher is on me. Let's get rid of that. All right, 
And let's go ahead and send this uh, all the way out. All right. So that will go to the end and sit. And then we'll hook to this anchor there. The dog is panting in game. All right. So I probably should put two panels. So I'm hoping this will raise up a little bit and not get stuck on the end. No, nope, it's going to misbehave. Grr, 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 grr. All right, let's try something. All right, so let's try... So these are sharp. That's part of the problem. So let's go ahead and we'll do this. Cut those, cut those, cut, and cut. And then I will do, get some. And yeah, let's just go like this. All right, so let's do that. And then what we'll do is we'll put some wedges there and see if we can't get, the, what did I just do? Did I do something? Oh, that has the panel there, so that can't go there. That's fine. And uh, this has a this has a lock on it. Let's turn that. All right, let's just go like that. Why this one didn't need it? Oh, because I flipped it. Okay. And so this just allows me to, uh, without power, lock these tracks up so that they lock in place. All right, and so that should hopefully be good to go. All right, and then do wedges. And hopefully this doesn't get hung up on the ramp. Because I'm trying not to have to do forklifts right now. Maybe do them later, but right now I'm trying not to have to do forklifts. Okay, I could just, you know, spawn them in there, but I don't want to. I want to load these in there. Part of doing this groundwork I find entertaining. So, Okay, let's spawn it. Alright, let's try these now. Hopefully these will slide in a little bit better and not get hung up because I can't have that hanging up nonsense. Alright, these are on the hot bus, so they are... You know, it's going to be using that battery A's power, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, we have battery B as a backup, and I don't think it will use too much electricity, we hope. So probably should slow the speed of the winch down. Nope. Let's go out, you ding-dong. Okay, so see, this is sliding in now. Then it should grab the tracks on that ramp. Okay, so see, it's locked in now. So it's on the track. See how it's sliding in? Okay. Let's get a quick pick here for the vidya. There's the dog walking around making a ton of panting noise. I wish we could cut the panting noise down, but you know, I can't see anything anyways with this. But um, All right, so that's, that's pretty much mostly in. Let's go back in and bring it all the way in. All right. So we'll bring the track in. That will bring it the rest of the way. Okay, and then so in order to bring the second one, I'm going to have to attach them, which isn't a big deal. Okay, so let's go and we'll relaunch it. All right, and so these are right next to each other. Let's go ahead and go lower the ramp all the way. Open the watertight door. We'll grab a rope. I will set this to one meter. And you know what it is? I think they're too close to each other, so one of them didn't grab is the problem. One of them didn't get a rope anchor when I was putting rope anchors on them because these suckers are too close to each other. All right, so this one needs to be cut and moved one block. Let's just do two to make life easier. Okay. Let's grab this, put that there. All right, let's go ahead and grab rope logic and just rope these suckers together like so. 
take six. You know, I've I've been trying this for a little while, trying to get this idea kind of you know figured out, and so I'm a little bit burned out on this particular idea right now. So this is the this is the one that's starting to be the closest to working well for me. Now I have a extra rope on me, which I cannot dump anywhere right now. So let's stick it there for now, and then let's grab this one. Okay. Jump over, please. Thank you, guy. Appreciate you. All right, so now this should work. So it's just learning the game mechanics and what you know, what will clip in and what will cause problems. Those are a little bit sharp. Okay, so that's actually behaving pretty well now. So let's go ahead and start tracking in. All right, so see it hooks to there. Beautiful. Look at that. So that actually works super duper well. That's really actually pretty good. Let's see if the watertight door shuts without causing an explosion. <laughs> yep. Okay. That works. So this is now locked in. Let's go ahead and ramp all the way up. And we can lock these tracks. I have to go on the other side to lock that one. Where did it go? Okay, it got deleted. Yes! When I moved it, it got deleted. Whatever. Alright, so that is in. So, next thing we need to do is we need to fill these suckers. So, uh, not here. Where, where are we? We are at uh, Dream War. So, we don't want to fill them here. We want to fill them up at uh, FJ. So, let's get out of here. Alright, so that is in. So, that's cool. Let's go ahead and we'll do our flow battery one, two systems avionics. Uh, okay, so I screwed up already. We're going to be bringing the fuel with us that we ferried up, but that's fine. Uh, beacon's coming on. Fuel is full. Fuel valve one, crank one. Fuel valve two, crank two. Gen one and hydraulics one are coming on. Gen two and hydraulics two are coming on. Flaps are going to one. Now pick up a clearance. Uh, 660 Golf, we're ready to pick up our clearance. We have information. Echo, we're going uh, down to FJ, uh, 2,000 feet. Uh, 660 Golf, you're clear to FJ. Uh, climb and maintain, 2,000 feet. Uh, head runway heading, uh, be taken off of runway. I, we'll see when we get on the runway. Take off runway heading, climb maintain 2,000 feet, and turn direct to FJ at 2,000. All right, uh, runway heading up to 2,000 feet, direct FJ at 2,000. Uh, six here at golf. Six here at golf, uh, let me know on this frequency when you're ready to taxi. Uh, six here at golf, we're ready to taxi. Uh, six here at golf, uh, taxi straight ahead and hold short. There, actually, you know what? There would not be a tower here. This is too small of an airport, so I'll make position calls. So we don't need to. All you do is make position calls. And so it's an uncontrolled field. It's an uncontrolled ramp. So just uh, make a position call. So what you do is it's everybody, all the pilots, would just make their calls, telling people where they are. They tell them they're taking off. They don't ask for permission because it's just other planes operating the pattern. All right, so uh, before takeoff checklist, uh, flaps are set. Uh, we do an after start checklist. After start checklist would be hydraulics are on. Hydraulics on and 1500 PSI aside. Uh, fuel lights, engines, RPM, manifold, all that. Okay, that's done. Uh, before takeoff checklist, flaps are set. Trim is set. Props are set. Uh, before takeoff checklist complete. Why is this one in reverse? Oh, they're both in reverse. Okay. Uh, Draymore traffic, uh, 660 six, six, Golf is taken off of runway, whatever. Uh, Dream, uh, Draymore traffic. Alright, so here we go. So we're taking off. Navstro's landing taxi all coming on. Beautiful. I've not used the de de icing, the de icing function yet. That will be, uh, hopefully, we'll go up the Arctic soon and use that. But this is going to be another way to make money, is so. I, I'm going to make a bunch of these pallets, and so we can do things like transport. In this case, we're going to be transporting jet fuel. 
because we have a lot of it and we don't need any of it right now. We don't have any jet-powered aircraft and or any jet-powered craft, so we don't need it. And this is a faster way to move it. Airspeed alive. V1, rotate. Positive brake, gears up. You're coming up. 100 knots, flaps up. All right, what's my heading? So 239, so we'll do 240. So I just need to retrim here. All right, let's grab FJ. So we're gonna land, we're come in probably about here. That's about the minimum final you'd want. So let's put that in. All right, flaps are start. Our flaps, uh, props are coming back, and so we're reducing. We're increasing the blade pitch. We're setting it so that we have a lower RPM, and that is increasing the blade pitch to give us more bite out of the air. It's going to slow the engines down as well. The way this happens in real life is you have what's known as a prop governor, and it's essentially centrifugal. So it has um, as the weights spin out it will essentially open or close a valve to let oil in to either to change the uh, to change the uh, prop pitch. All right, so 137, backing up on this 137, that is good. So now we want to back it up with our heading hold, so 137. So we don't actually put the heading hold in, but it's backed up. So if the GPS system wigged out and did something silly, we just press heading hold and we're in business. That's why it takes precedence. Those altimeters like holding, or altitude holds holding 200 feet off. I'll have to see what's up with that and fix it. All right, so we're currently only four minutes out. So this is the very small distance of the framework. So we are coming from up here. Oh, I didn't mean to look, but we're coming from up here. Let me get rid of that. I don't want the cheaties on. Okay. So we're coming from up here, Draymore. If we drew a straight line, we pretty much came out, turned, and so we're gonna miss all obstacles, so we can descend. We're only four minutes out, so we're gonna descend down to 1,000. And so at this point, we probably call um, FJ approach, or you know, the approach frequency that covers FJ, so. Uh, approach. This is uh, six six Sierra Golf. We are uh, one thousand four for one thousand feet, headed uh, direct to the uh, F final approach fix for runway seven at FJ. We have information. Echo. Uh, six Sierra Golf squawk zero one two three and I dent uh, zero one two three and I dent in a flash. So you put in uh, zero one two three in the transponder. I dent is you press a button called I dent and it will flash on the radar for them. So. It shows little dots on the radar that has all your information, so you'd flash it so they can quickly see where you are. Uh, six Sierra Golf, uh, have you? We have you uh, in sight. Or yeah, what would they say? I'm trying to remember exactly how they phrase it. Uh, six Sierra Golf, uh, continue. Six Sierra Golf, continue. Uh, they'd say uh, six Sierra Golf radar contact. That's what they'd say. It's been a little while. All right, so we can back it up with some VFR stuff so we can see we have, screw fast travel. Uh, we have the wind farm here, so we're coming just past the wind farm and we were on this course so we know where we are. So the distances are very short, as I've said. We're actually going quite a bit slower here with, um, with, the, with that stuff on us. Like 20, 20 knots slower with that little bit of stuff in our cargo bay. So those are empty at present. I believe they're empty. They better be empty. I don't think I put spawners. And I, I've done so many iterations of this trying to get ready that it's been a kind of annoying. I, I'm just like plastered to the floor here. I can't stand up. There we go. All right, so we're currently 1.9. So what we're going to do is switch over to heading hold. So it's 136, so we'll, we'll fix it, but it's close enough. 
136, go over to heading hold. Okay, next thing we're gonna do. So now we're traveling via heading hold instead of GPS. So this point here, if we put another point at the end of the runway there, when we get close to this, what we'll do is now put in the new GPS waypoint. Actually, if I do that, I'm gonna get rid of the, the distance. So we'll leave it on for now. But we're starting to visually see where we're at. We do have weather on. If we look, we have uh, override weather. Ooh, that's hairy. We'll leave it like this for now. We'll see what happens. That's pretty, that's a lot of fog. One of the reasons why I often do it is it's just, it's so foggy often that it makes it hard to see. And let's crank that fog down. I don't want to be looking at that fog. It just makes it, it makes it not fun. Can't see anything. It doesn't look great for you guys to watch. So I'll just turn it down. It's nice every once in a while, but I need to get these instrument approaches actually running again. Let's see the docks. I have point 0.8 off of the airport. So we're going to go ahead and we'll stick this in. I can visually see it here in a second. So uh, Six here at Golf. We have the airport in sight. Uh, six here at Golf. You're clear to land runway 7. Clear to land runway 7, six here at Golf. Autopilot's off. Uh, gear's coming down. Props are going forward, full forward on the props. You'll see we get a little bit of a speed increase, then we'll get a speed decrease. All right, props are full forward, flaps coming down. Lights are coming on. And then I would, so trim, you trim. Then I call for the uh, landing checklist, landing checklist. Uh, gear is down, three green, flaps are set, lights are set, props are full forward. Landing checklist complete. And that's how you make sure you don't screw something up and crash, is uh, checklists. Do your flow and then do your checklists. So that over there is our, there's our oil right there. There's where all our money is sitting right there in those tanks. We have great wealth in those tanks. All right, turn on final here. Been on the kind of extended base to final. So I'm looking at those two big white squares. Those are my aiming bars. And I look all the way down the runway. So I line up with my aiming bars where I want to touch down. And I'm looking at the end of the runway. I'm not looking at the close end of the runway. This is where a lot of people make the mistake. I'm looking at the end. And that gives me better perception of where I am. So we need to come to the right here. So wings down. Starting to gently come over and starting to pull the power. Flare, flare, just gentle flare. Don't need a ton of flare. I'm gonna fly it to the ground. All right, there we go. Let's go all the way into reverse on our props. Beta to reverse. And six here at golf, you can turn left and uh, head to the ramp with me. Uh, six here at golf, uh, turn left and uh, we'll head to the ramp with you. All right, so when they say that we head to the ramp with me, that means that we don't need to contact ground. We can just uh, we can just go with them. Ooh. And I gave it a big goose of power. Big goose of power there. Too much power is what I did. Yeah, six here at golf. Uh, you can uh, go ahead and switch to the ramp. Six here at golf over the ramp, thanks. All right, so I'm actually gonna, let's come down. And so I'm gonna turn in place. If we look where I am, I'm gonna turn in place. So I have both of them in reverse. I'm just gonna take this one, put it in beta. And then I'm gonna start gently pushing it up. And as you can see, we can rotate in position. And if I go full nose wheel, and I also tap my right brake. I can stay in position while I do it. And so I'm just gonna turn because I just wanna put the cargo door facing those pumps. I 
Alright, so I'm gonna let us roll a little bit and then I'm gonna tap the four. So four is my right brake. And so if I tap my right brake, so I have full uh, nose wheel steering, I have asymmetrical thrust, and I'm tapping the brake. So I have a lot of tools to get myself uh, turned here with a multi engine aircraft. So going to the beta, parking brake's coming on. And we'll do a shutdown flow after. We do an after landing first, so after landing would be lights and flaps are up. After landing checklist is complete. Now strobes would come off as well. And we'll shut down fuel valve on one, gen on one, hydraulics on one, fuel valve on two, gen on two, and hydraulics on two. All right, shutdown is complete. So shutdown checklist, uh, fuel valves off, generators off, hydraulics are off, and uh, we'll leave the airplane up. So what I'll do is I'll shut off the B battery and preserve that battery so that will stay there and we can leave the power on because we're just filling up here all right good so let's go ahead and we'll drop the ramp all right good so drop that ramp and then I'm gonna come out this door all right and so we have to be careful this fuel hose they I think they did a good job with the they did a good job with that update with the ropes. I love the ropes. I just wish they did it on the hoses and the cables too. So that would have been nice. Okay, so that's pumping out because this will turn the whole aircraft. It will try to yank that out. So it's going to misbehave now, I think. So we'll see. We'll see how what it does to me. Okay, and it's going to be too far anyway here. Hose too short. Okay, so yeah, see, I can't even get over there. That's all right. Let's do this instead. Hopefully that's not close enough. Okay, good. Let's go ahead and I should have... Do these have spawners in them is the question. Jet fuel, beautiful. Jet fuel, beautiful. Jet fuel, beautiful. Okay. So we're going to spawn this train here of jet fuel uh, cars. So it'll actually make it a little bit more fun, too. And so I have my my set of triples here. All right. And we need to get out, and I need to hook up that to give my... So this, this gives me brakes, and it also gives me... Uh, power. So this powers my pumps, but it also gives me brakes, which is more important. Now what's going to happen is if you don't have trailer brakes on, you can easily pass the trailer brakes through the pintle, or I'm doing it through the cable just to be more realistic. So if the cart stops, this is a lot of mass, a lot more mass than this cart. The the trailers are going to push this and, and move the cart. If I have brakes, it's going to stay uh, nice and secure. So those are, I don't know if they're all full of jet fuel, but whatever. I have them enough to get this going here. So, And this will probably end up being the picture here. So let's go ahead and park that. Shut. The, I need the power on because this cart powers those, uh, those cars, those trailers rather. Yeah, let's see if we can't get the, uh, can't get the screenshot here. Think like that. Okay. So let's go ahead and start pumping. And we'll go pump on, pump out. Stuck on that bar. Okay. So this should start filling up. So it's 3,000 liters in there. I forget what, uh, I think we can hold 2,000 in each of those containers in there. So when that stops, I know it's full. So pretty simple. And now when I put this train back, all the jet fuel will go back in. So that's the Jet A picture, uh, Jet A symbol there for what Jet A looks like. So I made these back when I did one of the Jersey challenges. I did my UFO. Nice thing with the ramp is because the ramp touches the ground, what you'll need when you load a lot of cargo aircraft. It, now, if you remember, 
when you build an airplane, the center of gravity is about here. And so you want your, your main gear behind the center of gravity if you have a conventional tricycle. And so the issue is it's very close and it needs to be close. Like, you know, notice a lot of new players, they'll put the gear back here, center of gravity is here, and they're like, I can't take off. It's because, you know, you're, you're supposed to be, it's like a seesaw. You want as little force in the back as possible. If the pivot point's way back here, you need a ton of force to lift it up. And so by putting it right behind the there, it makes it easy to tip. Well, the problem is if you slide cargo off, it could uh, make the plane send its tail. Well, the ramp comes down and keeps it secure, prevents that. So you'll actually see tail stands on a lot of planes, uh, cargo planes, you know. So as they're putting containers in there, the tail stand keeps it from uh, sitting on its tail. And so it's just a big, it's just a big. Uh, post essentially and they stick the post under the tail to keep it from coming down so i have a i have a meter in here as you can see we have a uh, about halfway full in there so just coming up past half now and then i should probably be able to get this front one filled here i don't think i i don't know if i can go up a uh don't know if i can go up the stairs with this in my hand we'll find out here no i can could not remember. It's been a while. All right, so that one's filling as well. So let's check this one. Yep, it's so good. So those are both are filling up. So we'll wait for this to fill up, and then that will get us going here for, uh, you know, bringing these up. So that's going to be about 4,000 liters. So that's going to be about $24,000. What we're going to do first is we'll actually bring the, when we go to the military base, we'll stick the Seagull in the hangar. And what I'll do is I will offload the fuel into the hangar. And then at my leisure, I can spawn like this or whatever craft I want to then go transport it and sell it. And, uh, you know, so that makes a lot more sense to do that. All right, so it looks like we are all filled up here. So this is showing no flow, and this is showing no flow. So the likelihood is these are full. And so let's go ahead and grab these. And let's just double check. So right on the interior there, of course, so I have to go in. But, uh, you know, I made these pretty light and simple, so they don't have... For example, they don't have uh, readouts. They just... You can just use your tool tips. So, you know, I would, you know, once I know that it stops, I know it's full. So it's, I don't need to have really a, a dial on there. So let's go ahead and we'll grab the cart and we'll put this away and maybe grab a pick on the way by. But it's nice having a little jet fuel train here. And so there's a good way to fill up. This holds a good bit of uh, fuel. And these are some nice trailers to get going here. You know, I'm glad the cargo bay isn't ridiculously large in the Seagull. You know, it's it's tempting to make everything so that it can fit a container. I would like them to do a smaller container standard as well. That would be, I think, um, nice for more opportunities doing stuff like this. It'd be nice if we got a mission to move a pallet, you know, and have some smaller pallets. You know, that would be kind of a cool thing, I think. So this, what's my battery at? Okay, battery's not bad. It's just heavy. That's a lot of weight back there. It doesn't need to move fast. It's like a lot of the ramp equipment is very small like this because you don't, you're don't, you not moving fast. You know, A lot of why vehicles are incredibly powerful is if they need to go on the road is, you know, that's when you tend to need a lot of... Uh... So so that put the all the jet fuel that was left in there back in here, and we have a... Good, uh, 4,000 liters, a little bit over 4,000 liters in the back of the gull, so. And yeah, so that should push that back, and hopefully we haven't heard any explosions. I'm going to just shut that off, I think. Uh, we'll leave vehicle damage on. I actually want to uh, make sure engine overheating is on as well. I'll leave it on. Um, I'm afraid of it touching the door that it will cause problems. But uh, we're not going to land on the water, so hopefully we don't have an issue. This should probably be the other way, so that we, but it can't be because of the uh, window. But just so that uh, if that door came open, it wouldn't blow up, blow against the wind. All right, so let's go ahead. And we're looking at the marshaller. We're waving. They're waving back to us. We're going to check 
Uh, say we're down to 49% battery. So if we kick that one on, now we have more battery. So we're uh, spinning our number one finger, telling us our, our left finger, spinning it. Uh, we put up one, and then you spin it, and that's asking to spin one. They spit, they spin it back. You're telling you to spin one. Because in a big airplane like this, we can't see who's around it. And then we put up two fingers, and we would, uh, sp you know, and then he would spin it. So we can spin two, and then we do Gen 1, Hydraulics 1, in preparation. All right, that's up. So Gen 2, Hydraulics 2. Flaps are going to 1. Uh, we're going to be taking off runway 7, so we're going to go put in uh, 072. Let's expect 2,000 feet. At uh, 6 year golf, ready to pick up our clearance. We have information. Foxtrot. At uh, 6 year golf, you're cleared to the military. Uh, military island. Uh, climb maintained, 2,000 feet, runway heading, and uh, direct to military at uh, 2,000 feet. And you can contact ground on 21.9. Alright, uh, runway heading up to 2, uh, two direct to military and uh, ground 21.9. Thanks. Alright, so let's go ahead and contact them. At uh, ground 6, Sierra Golf has Foxtrot, and we're ready to taxi. Uh, 6, Sierra Golf, you can taxi and hold short of 7. Can you take an intersection departure? Affirmative, we can. So despite taking on 8,000 pounds of fuel in our cargo bay, we should be able to do an intersection departure, which intersection departure means we're going to take off here instead of going to the end. So, uh, you know, we're taking off at one of the intersections. Uh, 6 Sierra Golf, you can contact uh, Tower on 120.7. 120.7, 6 Sierra Golf. Uh, 6 Sierra Golf, we're ready to take off runway 7. 6 Sierra Golf, you're cleared for takeoff. Uh, cl uh, climb maintain 2,000. Uh, runway heading, climb maintain 2,000 feet, 6 Sierra Golf. Uh, clear for takeoff runway 7. Uh, runway heading up to 2,000 feet, 6 Sierra Golf. Alright, here we go. So. This is the first uh, time we've had any real weight in the back there, so we'll see. I'll give it a little bit of an extra goose in the throttle. No problem. All right. Pause rate gear is coming up. And as soon as I get in the air, I'm trim re-trimming it here. Uh, 100 knots. Flaps coming up. And we'll finish the flow. Autopilot's coming on. Change the... Um, so we're going to expect we're going to be landing this runway, so I actually want to come up to about there. All right, 1,006 for two. As soon as we hit two, we're going to be making our turn. Here's our turn. That's six year golf contact departure on 129.6. 129.6, six year golf. That's six year golf is uh, leveling off at 2,000 feet, and we're headed direct to uh, military. That's six year golf uh, radar contact. Continue. Ah, uh, six here, golf. All right, props are coming back. So you see, bringing the RPM. So I'm essentially setting the RPM I want and letting the PID control the props. So we're going to bring them all the way back to go into uh, max endurance. So this is going to be our most fuel efficient. So setting my RPM as low as I can, which will set my prop pitch as high as I can, which is uh, one. And that's max endurance. So, still doing 162 knots, which, especially in the very, very short distances of storm arcs, that's not a problem. Again, the distance from here to here is at most 45 nautical miles, which is 15 minutes. So, 15 minutes from all the way up there. And then, of course, we're just going a little itty bitty old here. So, no point in screaming around. Distances are incredibly short. So. All right, so we'll be there in three minutes. So that's, you know, this is why I kind of whine a little bit about the distances is it's just, it's silly that they're this close together. You know, for me, you know, I, you know, 15 minutes is a, is a good flight, but, you know, this is kind of short. And I get it, you know, a lot of boat, you know, be, because you can do stuff on land and, and boats and stuff like that. But what you can do is when you, if you did spread these out, devs, like, say... You know, you kept, like, I thought they were going to put this island down here. That would have been beautiful. That would have been pretty good. That would have been half an hour of flying from here up to Arctic. So that would have been awesome. And then 15 minutes here. That's pretty close. 
And then people were worried about, oh, it's going to take 100 years to get anywhere with a boat. Well, not really. You know, I talked about this last career build series is, you know, there's plenty to do in a boat here, right? You know, you can go to the Refiner Island, and you can take it from the Refiner Island up to Sawyer South. You can take it from the Refiner Island. You can go through here and go up to military. You can go from here and go over here and dump diesel off. So there's plenty of shorter boat trips that are all within this continent. And then there are plenty of trips that you could take with ships in here, right? You can take a container here, you can go up through here, and you can dump a container off here. You can take a container here, you can go up through here, and you can dump a container off here. So there's plenty to do in a local area. And so what you can do is you can hang in the local vicinity, and then when you want to take a little bit of a journey, you would go the fifth, you know, the long distance in a boat, which it is, up to the Arctic. But it actually is kind of cool because what it would do is because the trip takes you so long to get there, you'd want to stay in the Arctic for longer. You wouldn't want to just go to the Arctic and come back. You'd want to go up to the Arctic. Okay, I'm in the Arctic. It took me a long time to get here. I don't want to spend eight hours to get back. What I'll do is I'll do some local missions. And then you spend maybe, you know, uh, 10 hours in the Arctic. And then you're like, okay, I'd like to go back down the south. And then you take the long journey down south. So, you know, I get it. But, you know... If they scaled it properly, and I think they did a pretty good job. You know, you have the ability, like I said, you know, you can you can do container missions and never leave the arid biome. You can do container missions and never leave this little neighborhood. You know, remember, we only had this for a while. Well, you could do missions where you could come from here to do a container there, then take a container here, and then take a container here. Well, that's plenty of boat work all in this area, plus missions. You know, there's a lot of missions in here. And so then you move down here. Well, now you have a bunch of missions here, and you can do local stuff, go up to the Arctic, do local stuff, and then take these continental trips when you want. And I think that would have been a, is a better way to do it than have this island super close. I think one reason they did it was they didn't want to stretch the train too far. But And I hate the trains going over the water like this. You know, it'd be kind of cool. It, you know, my preference would be instead of being able to take a train, which I understand for a lot of people, they love to have the train there, and I don't want to poo-poo other people's gameplay. So one thing I'm always a big advocate is is give us the ability to have a checkbox so that we can get rid of this, you know. And they could probably do it with theirs, like, instead of having this spur off here, have a junction, and this spurs into the junction. And then when you deselect the checkbox, it deletes all of the train over the water and then so you, you can do trains on this continent you can do trains on this continent you can do trains on this continent and then there's no you have to do boats everywhere else you know so i think that would be kind of cool so let's see what we have for views out the old window so lovely lovely views out there i do like the greenery here of the sawyer islands i would like to get back to the Sawyer Islands at some point here. That would be kind of nice. Kind of been spending most of my time in Arid, and one of it's it just FJ works out well for me. You know, FJ is a nice centralized location that has a bunch of stuff, but it would be nice to get up here more. So maybe we'll do some more here uh, when we have the opportunity and uh, get a little bit more into the Sawyer. But I need to buy some of these to make that work. So we own built military now. You know, it'd be nice to have some air bases. The issue, again, is, is part of how the missions are set up. You really need some more missions. I would love to see airport-to-airport -airport missions. There are some. Actually, there really aren't. And that's one thing I think is a missed opportunity for the devs that they can put in one of the... Or just add to the game. Minor update. I don't care how they do it. But uh, add the ability for us to... You know, for example, you'll get a mission that says transport two people and cargo to X. Okay? Well, that's fine. That's a good mission. But... It will be transport people from this airport to this island. And so, well, guess what? You can't take a, a plane. You can take a seaplane, but you can't take a regular plane. It would be nice if they added. They don't have to take away the other missions, but add it so that you have one from here to here. You know, of course, this is way too close, but, at, you know, have people need transport from this airport and their cargo box up to the Arctic. And then it would be airport to airport, give planes a little bit more use. You know, that people talk about the meta is always helicopters, and one of the reasons is they didn't, uh, you know, they don't give us the missions to uh, do some of this plane stuff. Yeah, six-year golf. You can contact Tower on 120.7. 120.7, six-year golf. 
Uh, six zero golf. We are. Oh, there we go. We're gonna start in orbit here if we're not careful. Crap, crap, crap. No, don't. Just, just go away for now. Fast travel. Uh, six zero golf. We're one mile out. We uh, have the airport in sight. Uh, six zero golf. You are uh, clear to land runway. What is it? Two. Uh, clear to land runway two six zero golf. All right. So runway is in sight. Uh, landing gear is coming down. Flaps are going full forward. Gear is down. I think I licked that gear problem. Flaps are coming down. Let's. <laughs> I know I probably just jinxed myself saying I fixed the gear problem, but. All right, so I need to start trimming. So with that anti-flap system, I need to actually trim. You know, before you need to do a tiny bit of trim, but this is much more realistic, the amount of trimming that I have to actually do compared to real life. And so I like to have my stuff be pretty realistic. So I missed that. I overshot because I was busy. So I'm coming back now. This will be a go around. We're not stabilized by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm just going to I'll fix it. You yeah, really shouldn't be trying to fix these sorts of things. You should be going around, but again. I was, you know, part of it's, like, again, like I said, the things are so close that it's just like I instantly, I just get my departure done and I'm, I'm ready to land already. All right, going into reverse. And we're going to come up into beta. Okay, we're in beta. And so we're just going to coast in beta. And we'll start making our turn. All right. Essex, you're a golf. You can turn right there and uh, contact the ramp. Essex, you're a golf. Uh, right on echo and contact the ramp. Oh, I'm off a little bit. I couldn't see the taxiway. Too much nose. The definitely asymmetrical brakes helps. Just uh, just gently tap for and gives me a nice. It's a little bit more responsive than my steering, my nose wheel steering is. So I'm gonna try to get close to those pumps. The hose is probably gonna pull us, and I need to make sure it's close. So. All right, setting the brake. Now we can go into beta. All right. All right, so as you can see, ba the uh, battery one is uh, recharged at this point. So that one was down quite a bit from our last operation. All right, so let's go ahead and open the ramp, and we will offload this fuel. All right. Yep, what happened here? Yeah, there we go. I think I put on a uh, feature request for. I think I put in a feature request for uh, composite nodes on small pivots. If I could do that, I could do the same type of timing I do with gear for the ramp. Where, so for example, what you would do is the only time that this section would go down is when this ramp is at this position or lower. You know, so you put it in a range. The only time that these will be flush is when it's it's uh, between middle position and up. And so you can do that a little bit better. So I'll check back in with you guys when this is uh, empty. All right, so the two pallets are now empty. So there's another 4,000 liters or so in the workbench here at the military base. And so anytime we need some money, we can go in, take the short trip, and try to sell this. Currently, let's see on the map if the sell point is up. It is. So it took a little while. People have been saying, my my sell points disappear, my sell points disappear. It took me about the entire episode for it to return. So I'm quite curious if that is one of the mechanics they've added. Uh, you know, they took away surge pricing, and so I'm curious if they're making it so that it just uh, makes it so you can't sell instead of surge pricing, uh, hopefully for the moment, and hopefully they fix it. But uh, we'll go ahead and we'll end the episode there. As you can see, we have a new mission that popped up here, so maybe we'll do that next time. So I hope you guys enjoyed that one, and we'll see you in the next one.